it's so wonderful that we can come and we can not step out of, not hide from anything that's going on, but to actually give ourselves time and space to really tune into what is real, what is actually happening for us. So let's just give ourselves a moment to do that. So exhale into this moment. Before we even start to focus on the, the intentional pranayama or the intentional breathing, just be with that exhale. Let the inhale happen very naturally. And with every exhale, maybe even imagining those roots, every part of our sacred bodies that are in contact with Mama Earth, imagining roots growing down deep, holding us, keeping us secure. That umbilical cord, that lifeline to the mother herself. How precious it is to be in a human body in this day and age, knowing that we're not here by mistake. We're not on this path by mistake. We're not in each other's lives by mistake. Everything happens so beautifully and unfolds with such purpose and such intention, whether or not we realize it. So exhaling into that, Exhaling into the great capital T, that, great spirit, all that is. So hum, I am that. Breathing into that space. Everything that we hold miraculous, everything that we hold dear, everything that we hold beautiful, everything that we hold fearful, I am that, I'm all of that. I'm not separate from any of that. So, being that we are that, that great spirit, that Ma herself, the universe itself embodied. There's no part of us that is not welcome here in this space. So as you start to come into your intention, just start to bring in all of those pieces. Any fear, any shame, any guilt, any doubt, any anger, any joy, Anything that you're present to, any felt sense, any thought, any emotion, all of it is welcome here. And then as you settle in with each of those pieces and allow yourself to be held by Mama Earth, what is your sankalpa, your jiva sankalpa, your, your individual sankalpa for, for your practice tonight? How do you want to hold these pieces tonight? How do you want your practice to illuminate, heal, transform, be with, be still with these pieces? How can we offer these pieces on the altars of our hearts? Offer them not as a sacrifice, but as a gift of love, as a gift of honor in recognizing that every part of us is honored. Every part of us is divine. So keep exhaling into that. Again, the inhale will come quite naturally. And as you exhale into those beautiful pieces, blowing off the dust, blowing off the mud, blowing off anything that would cover up their beauty. I'm going to chant our mantra calling in the guru, calling in our guides, calling in the teachers who have blessed us with the wisdom of this practice. My teachers, your teachers, calling on our ancestors, the ancestors of the land that we live on, for me, the ancestors of the Tongva people. Acknowledging them, acknowledging their presence. Keep exhaling. 
When we let go, we make space for what is coming to come in naturally. So when we exhale, that inhale comes on its own completely naturally with ease. Inhale, release. Take a few more exhales to the space that you're in. Rukam Dehi, Jayam Dehi, Yasho Dehi, Duisho Jahi. Grant us your form. How do we want to recognize the form of unconditional love? the form of divinity, the form of self, as we move and rest and find stillness in our practice this evening. Jayam Dehi, grant us victory. Jai, Jayam Dehi. Where would we allow our practice to show us the many, many resources of gratitude in our lives, the many places where we have obtained victory over past thoughts, past versions of ourselves. Not victory like we defeated them, but we've, we've grown. We've brought all of those pieces with us. And we have found victory over ways of being that no longer serve us. And where would we like to move into more and more space of celebration, of feeling undefeated, of united, being united with self. Yasho Dehi, grant us welfare. Where do we physically need to experience well being with our practice this evening? Emotionally, psychologically, mentally, welfare, wellness. Yasho Jahi, is there any hostility? any pieces of us that we feel like we're holding back. Again, placing them 
on the altars of our practice and allowing them to be illuminated with wisdom, with knowledge, with trust, with many, many exhales. So when you're ready, we're going to just move really slowly tonight. It's the new moon. So many of us may be experiencing the bleeding moon. So moving really, really slow, and of course, as always, giving ourselves permission to opt out of anything that just doesn't feel like it's in alignment with what our bodies need. We're going to make our way into Parvatyasana, or angle pose, cobbler's pose. There are many names for all of these poses. We'll bring the soles of our feet together and the knees will splay open. But before you get there, take your time. You might be on your back, you might be sitting up, you may have taken any other shape for meditation. So what movements do you need? What stretches do you need before coming into this Padvatsyasana? Really, really giving yourself permission to take time. If your lower back is tight, you might give yourself something to sit up on, a cushion or a block, pillow. And if this doesn't feel comfortable for you for any reason, you're welcome to sit in Sukhasana or Padmasana, any cross-legged shape. So once you get here, without judgment, just notice where are we holding tension? What's happening in our backs? Are we kind of rounding in the back? Are we kind of pushed forward, propelled forward by all of the tension that we're carrying? Again, not judging, but checking in and noticing where we are with our bodies. Exhale into it. Just notice that. We carry this around with us all day, most every day. And that's nothing to be ashamed of or to judge. It's just an opportunity to check in. And then if your body says it's okay, very slowly just start to lift up through the heart a little bit. You can anchor your hands onto your shins if that feels appropriate. And just as much as, so we're not, you know, pushing anything. We're just allowing. We're allowing the heart to gently rise up. Allowing a little more space down into that pelvic floor so that we can allow the breath to travel there with a little more ease. Softening the jaw, softening the thighs and the knees. And again, just noticing how does that feel? And then taking an inhale here. Exhale, very slowly start to walk those hands out in front. See if you can keep the heart lifted for just a moment. Come down and find that edge where you first really start to feel that stretch. Breathe here. Notice if the shoulders again start to round. It's okay. Invite a little more space. Lengthen through the spine just a little bit more. Take an inhale here. And then exhale, allow yourself to release into the posture. So that might be allowing gravity to come in and really just kind of pull everything toward Mama Earth. You might take a bolster or block and bring the earth up to meet your third eye. So there are many, many options. Explore, find what feels comfortable for you, and then land in whichever variation of this pose offers you the most support and the most sense of nurturing. We'll be here for about three minutes or so. So really allowing yourself to exhale into the pose. Okay. Asana means seat. Whenever we, you know, if we invite somebody over and we say, hey, have a seat, we're inviting them to stay a while. We're inviting them to be comfortable, to open up, to be present with us, right? Have a seat. That's literally what we're doing. Our practice is saying, have a seat. Open up, be here with me, just be present. So 
So that's why it's so pivotal that in any asana practice, we give ourselves space to rest and to find stillness. Whether we're doing an intense warrior sequence where we're doing a lot of standing, we still want to pause in those standing poses. Drink in the soma. Even when our muscles start to shake and we feel like we can't hold it anymore, it's not about punishing ourselves, it's about being present. Revealing our perceived weaknesses and showing ourselves just how strong we are. Giving ourselves permission to rest, to adapt. Yoga is such a beautiful mirror back to us, showing us exactly what we need. But so often we, we make this like so many other things very performance based and we just kind of push through it. So tonight, and with every asana practice, every practice of yoga, it's an invitation to allow the stillness to have a seat. Take about three more breaths here. Maybe taking those breaths a little bit deeper or slowing down the exhale a little bit more. Maybe releasing that third exhale audibly or with a breath of Kali. Again, permission, especially since we're practicing at home, we have a little more space to kind of express. So give yourself permission to really utilize that. And then when you do come up, we're going to come back up into that seat. Just taking Sukhasana, so easy seat. We're just going to get a little bit, so again, we're being a little extra gentle, even for us tonight, because it is the new moon. So just very, very gently, just start to rotate very slowly here, just little hip circles. If this feels okay for you, you're also welcome to sit in stillness and just focus on your breath. So very gentle. Feel that connection to Mama Earth really like a tap root, keeping you super connected to her with that root check that meets the ground. So beautiful when we can connect into our natural rhythm with mother. And then 
the next time you come forward, you might consider just taking that the other direction. Notice if anything feels different going this way. Keep breathing. Just a couple more, maybe two more. So normally I cue you when to breathe. Tonight though, we're creating a little more space for you to just listen to that inner guru, that inner guide breathe with your own rhythm to not force anything and especially with the new moon coming to stillness when you're ready so we don't want to do intense pranayama work intense breath work when we're with the new moon whether we're bleeding or not the new moon is a time to just rest and to be with the natural rhythms and observe as we start to wax into the full moon again that's when we can start playing with pranayama and moving things around but the new moon is that bare energy, that cave energy, where we get to just be. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing to fix anyway, because we're not broken. But especially with the new moon, we simply hold ourselves with all tenderness. We see what needs to be released. We give those seeds to the earth, right? It's not garbage, it's seeds that we're planting. I see that this isn't serving me, so I'm planting it deep within the earth mother so that something can grow that does nourish me, that does fuel me and achieve me. But that's the extent of our doing during the three days of the new moon. Okay. If you want a nice counter stretch, you might just place your hands behind you, fingertips away, lift up from the heart. You can stay right here or explore by actually coming up onto the knees and pressing the hips forward again, just gently for a breath or so, and then coming back down. going to stay with that grounding mama energy. So you're sitting on a mat. We're going to do a variation of pigeon. So the right shin is going to come to line up parallel-ish with the front of your mat. And then the left shin will come right on top. So the foot is over the knee, knee is over the foot, and they're making kind of a straight line against the, the edge of your mat. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be. If your hips are tight, this knee is going to be way up here. So that's what we have props for. Give yourself lots and lots of support. And then this might be where you stay. This might be like, you're really feeling the intensity of this. So stay here. If this doesn't feel okay for you, you can always straighten this right leg out and just kind of hold this left knee here. So again, lots and lots of variations. So settle in, see what feels appropriate for your body, wherever you are tonight. Maybe hands come to the earth, maybe to the knees. Just take an inhale, feel. Feel any pulling, if there's any sharp shooting pain, if there's any pain, then this pose is not for us tonight, so we back out of it, we take another variation. You can also always take reclined pigeon on your back. Of course, we are, we're opening the left hip first. If your body says it's okay to explore, only if your body says it's okay, take an inhale. Exhale, just walk those hands out in front of you. Maybe we stay right here. Maybe we stay right here on a block. Maybe we take another inhale. And exhale, come down just a little bit more. So keep taking those exhales and let the exhales guide you into the awesome, into the seat, until your body says, okay, I can find stillness here, even if just for a few breaths. And we'll hold this one for about two more minutes.
And you'll notice we're doing a lot of folding forward tonight. We, we do kind of a lot anyway in this class. But those forward folds are really good for our nervous systems. So we have a lot going on in our beautiful and dynamic world that we, we live in. So anytime we fold forward, it's a time of introspection, of coming inward. And we're kind of tuning out of all of this external stuff that's happening and allowing ourselves an opportunity to go in. That's why it's so calming for the nervous system. Plus it starts to stretch the spine and regulate the limbic system and all of these other things. So as we're here in these forward folds, we're also opening the hips in these variations. So hips are where we store a lot of our traumas and a lot of our stories, ideas about ourselves and ideas about whether or not the world is safe. So just notice what comes up physically. Notice what comes up emotionally. Don't get in the car and drive away with it. Just look at the pieces. Exhale. Expose the beauty of these pieces. All of you is welcome in this breath, in this awesome, in this practice, in this space that we've created together. No matter how distant we are, we've still come together in agreement to hold this sacred space. So in that sense, we're very, very close. And as we hold our own pieces, we're holding each other and holding giving strength to one another so that each of us can hold our pieces. And then we start to realize that all of our pieces create not only our own whole, but also the whole of each other. And there really is no separation. About 30 more seconds, almost there. When you're ready, you'll return to center, whatever your variation of center is. And just pause. Just feel whether you went all the way forward or you sat here pretty much the whole time, just feel how your body is receiving the space that you're creating with, with each of these poses, with each breath. And we're going to take this a little bit further still and come into Uttasana, cow, cow, excuse me, Gomukhtasana, which is cow face pose. So this right foot was on top of the, I'm sorry, the left foot was on top of the right knee. We know I'm notoriously bad with left and right. So we're going to take it all the way back, but our knees are gonna be stacked on top of each other. Now, if you're thinking, holy hell, that is not happening for me today, that is okay. You certainly don't have to do this. Again, you can extend that right leg forward and do Ardha Gomukhtasana, which is half. That is okay if that's where you are. Wherever you are, it's 100% okay. So when we get into this, again, you might have this big gap between your knees. So use a pillow, use a prop. The closer to your hips that your heels are, the less intense the pose. The further out you bring those feet, the more parallel they are with the edge of your mat, the more, more intense it's going to be. So, permission to explore and have a seat. So for this one, you might definitely stay upright. Again, listening to your body and allowing your breath to be the guide. If you want to explore, you can come into a forward fold. Usually I just put my hands out in front of me and kind of bring my chin to my chest. That's about as far as I usually go with this one. It is up to you. 
You can also put your hands behind you and lean back, which might take a little bit of the pressure off the hips and make it a little less intense, depending on your body. So again, listen, especially for those of us with lower back issues and, and hip issues, really important that we open them and create space here because this will help to, this is actually alleviating a lot of the pressure that's on our backs and our hips, causing the pain. But we definitely want to make sure that we're listening to our bodies and not pushing anything. You know, this very healing, if we work in tandem with our bodies and listen, Notice if your jaw is clenched up, permission to release that. Breath of Kali is really helpful for that. Just come into the breath. Again, tonight we're not really, we're not pushing the breath. We're not extending the exhales too much. The pranayama for tonight is simply being present with the breath. Noticing the natural rhythm. Noticing if the breath tends to stay shallow, if there's fear. Not judging it, just noticing it. We're in the cave, we're with bear receiving that medicine. Darkness is really quite beautiful if we learn to see that beauty in it. Just about 30 more seconds. And when you're ready, very gently return to your version of center. If you've taken Gomukdasana, any variation of it, very slowly unwind yourself. Maybe legs just come right out in front. Shake them out. Give yourself a moment to integrate that, right? That was a lot of hip opening on the left side and also folding forward. So take about a minute to take any simple movements that you might want or any posture of stillness and just exhale into this moment, what came up for you during that set on the left side before we come into the right side. Before we do the right side, let's take our legs out in front of us and just maybe walk those hands out, taking a forward fold, moving at your own pace, your own time. Maybe the forward fold today is we're up in Dandasana and staff pose, we're just right here. And we let the chin come to the chest. Again, cushion under the hips is really helpful if we're feeling exceptionally tight or if we just want to feel that extra support. You don't even need a reason. You don't have to be in pain to offer yourself support. This is something I'm learning. You can just give yourself support because you want the support. There doesn't have to actually be a reason for it. Noticing any differences between the left side and the right side as we just rest into this forward fold for about five or so more breaths. What are 
are we present to? What are the seeds that we're planting? Then when you're ready, very gently returning to center, of course, you're welcome to stay here much longer if you'd like. We're going to take that set to the other side. So this time, left shin is on the bottom, right shin on top. You might notice, like, you can see there's more of a gap here for me. This side's tighter. So, permission to explore, to use props, whether or not you think you need them. <sighs> And then to find that asan, to have a seat. This is a different side, so it might look different for you. So you decide where you're going to take this posture. Just please move with your breath. Lead with your heart. You know kind of where we're going, so give yourself permission to explore and make this entirely your own. Just take about three or four more breaths and then slowly make your way back to center whenever you're ready. Whenever you return to center, allow yourself that moment of stillness at center to just drink that in. How beautiful it is to create space where we hold so tightly to our stories and our experiences. And then we create space and we can see them a little more clearly and we can see the truth of our divinity, of our strength, of our power our sacredness in the midst of these stories and experiences. The 
exhale, we fan the flame of illumination so that we can see beyond that covering of Maya, that covering of disillusionment. We can see all of our pieces in the grand divine design that is etched into every single one of them. So hum. And then we'll take that transition coming into Gomuktasan on this side or any variation thereof. Again, you're welcome to stretch that left leg out front if that feels better. All right? Any variation that feels better for you. Use props, use support. And then allow your heart and your exhales to guide you into your expression of this pose. You and your practice are engaged in this beautiful dance. And your breath is kind of the music that guides you into it. So allowing yourself to have that level of just freedom, of expression as you're transitioning. And then the sweetness of the stillness as you have that asana, as you have the seat. Take about three or four more breaths. And very gently help yourself back to more variation of center. And you might stretch those legs back out in front once again. So this time we'll meet on our backs. So if you want to take another forward fold on your way, take your time. And there's absolutely no rush. Thank <laughs> you. 
So if you are not on your moon cycle, you might hug your knees in. If you are, just do that very carefully because we don't want to do anything that potentially will tilt the pelvis up. So we don't want to um, misalign that, that flow, that downward flow, right? So you can hug your knees in if you're not bleeding right now. <laughs> One of the things that's so powerful for us as women is to reclaim, for those of us who do bleed, to reclaim the sacredness of that too. And it's, it's not an inconvenience. It's not because we can't do things it's that we can. We're just, we can also honor our bodies, honor these beautiful seasons of our bodies. So that's, that's all we're doing. We are going to come into a twist though. So you might take your feet as wide as your mat. You can also keep them close together depending on how, what feels better on your lower back. Take an inhale. And then just let your knees exhale over to the left side. Arms will come out into a T. And any variation of a twist that you want. If you want to then stack your knees, if that feels better, you're welcome to do that. And again, just letting yourself exhale into this space now more connection with mama earth can you feel that connection almost as though we can feel the pulse her heartbeat we can hear the drums of the ancestors we can allow ourselves that primal and sacred connection to the earth mother herself and we can breathe into that inner stillness that that all leads to What are we holding on to? Are our hands clenched into fists? Why? What are we clinging to? Not judging. But it might even be helpful to turn your palms downward and imagine giving that over to the earth, burying it in the earth, those seeds of detachment, of trust, of surrender, of release. any fear, any worry, anything that would cause us to feel small or separate from the divinity that we are, from the love that we are. We can place those packets of seeds right into our earth mother and allow them to grow into something that allows us to see the infinitude of who we are, the truth of A few more breaths here. And when you're ready, allow your breath to gently guide you back to your center. And pause, maybe even one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart, or one hand on Mama Earth, one hand on the belly, anything that allows you to feel that connection. And just drink that in for a few moments. And then when and as you're ready, 
let that breath guide you into the twist on the other side. So this time the knees fall over to the right. This side might feel different. You might take a different variation. And then again, releasing any holding, giving it all over to mama. And allowing the breath now to be the lullaby that soothes you into the sweetness of the seat. We're setting up for our final resting pose now. Turning to that breath as the sanctuary, the lullaby, that place of that inner sanctum of trust and release. you're ready, allowing your breath to gently bring you back to center. Hmm. Pausing here once again. And then allowing our bodies to show us what variation of Shavasana we need to So listen, stay here at center until you're very clear. And then very gently, still moving with the breath, transition into your variation of your final resting pose, whatever that looks like this evening. Lots of support. If that's what you need. And as you settle into your final resting pose, this is where we go into that space of Shiva. Beautiful, be beautiful Shiva. Shiva is all pervading consciousness, pure consciousness, it's the truth of who we are. So, the intention behind Shavasana, I know a lot of times we talk about it as a pose of death, okay, to an extent. But really, it's a pose that creates the space for us to just be and allow the inner self to really emerge. So Shavasana is that space of meditation. 
no intentions, just pure connection with the love, with the divinity that we are. And everything else fades into the back.
so of course there's no rush for you to move. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you'd like. When you're ready, let your breath move you into whatever little movements or stretches feel appropriate for you. And I'd invite you to make your way into fetal position on the left side. get to that fetal shape, just taking a moment to again reconnect with Bhumi Devi, with Mama Earth, with this sacred temple, that our, our bodies that we call home, with the ancestors of yoga, with our own ancestors, with the ancestors of the land on which we dwell, prayers of gratitude, And then in, if and when you're ready, you can come up to a seat. And when you get into a seat, if you decide to come into this shape, letting your eyes close if that feels comfortable for you. If not, softly focusing your gaze on one point, maybe your hands. Natural breathing. Feeling that connection to Mama Earth. We get so excited about the full moon because the full moon is so luminous and it's so big and bold and flamboyant. And it is a time to celebrate. It's a time of fertility and abundance. We would not be able to appreciate the full moon if we didn't also have the beauty of the new moon, not the contrast, not like one is good and one is bad. The new moon, when, it's, when the moon is dark, we can see the stars. When the moon is dark, we can see other things that we don't normally get to see because it's eclipsed by the brightness of the moon. When we have these times of release and letting go when things might feel dark, there's so much beauty in this space there's so much grace here the fruitful darkness is all around us in bloom rampriya das says and so for this new moon as we prepare to take our asana practice our yoga practice from asana beyond it off the mat into our day-to-day -day living into our bedtime routine what is our sankalpa our intention for this new moon what are the seeds that we want to plant here in the this rich dark soil the energy of Kali. We celebrate Kali with the Amabasha. The new moon. The new moon is when we celebrate the goddess. The Purnima, the full moon, is when we celebrate more of the masculine energies, Vishnu, Ram. All also very beautiful. Because the full moon is that more outward expression, but the new moon is that inner, that Devi, that Shakti. So for this new moon, what are we 
what are we drawing so close to our, in our innermost places, the most sacred of spaces in our being? What are we cultivating here that maybe one day we'll share with the world? But for, not, for tonight, it's just for us. So what are those seeds that we're planting? There's no right or wrong. And then as the moon begins to wax, we water these seeds. We check in with our intentions, we nurture, we honor. And then when the full moon arrives, we check in, we see where we are, what's grown, what's sprouted. And then as the waning begins back toward the new moon, that's when we can see where any pruning needs to happen, where we harvest some new seeds that we'll be planting for the next new moon. For right now, in this moment, digging our hands into this rich, rich earth, this soil, what are we placing here? Big exhale. Trusting ourselves, trusting the Earth Mother, trusting our ancestors and our practice and our communities, trusting this process of unraveling and unfolding more and more into the divinity, into the love that we already are. We're just coming to know that more. We're not becoming, we're just seeing, discovering what's already here. Hmm. Hariyong Tat Sat, Jaya Jagadambe Mataki, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Jai Gurudev.